Tonight on Entertainment News, Quentin Tarantino announced the cancellation of what was supposed to be his final film. A new Taylor Swift album provides fans with a surprise twist. And kick off your Sunday shoes and hear what Kevin Bacon did for this Utah high school. Entertainment News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Entertainment News. I'm Madeline Cummings. And I'm Hannah Katz. Taylor Swift released a brand new album this Friday titled The Tortured Poets Department with a little surprise that fans weren't expecting. Just two hours after the album was released, she announced a second disc, running up a total of 31 songs on the album, featuring collaborations with artists like Post Malone, Florence and the Machine, and producer Jack Antonoff. The album sold approximately 1.4 million copies in its first days of release, marking Swift's biggest release ever. While this is only her 11th studio album, if the Tortured Poet Department debuts at number one in the Billboard charts, it will mark her 14th number one album, tying with Jay-Z for the most number one albums of any solo artist. The Grammy award-winning performer known as Mandisa passed away on Friday. Mandisa got her start on American Idol, placing ninth on season five, and went on to pursue a career in Christian folk music. At the 2014 Grammys, she won Best Contemporary Christian Music Album for her album, Overcomer. The cause of death still has yet to be reported. She was just 47 years old. Quentin Tarantino revealed that he has decided to cancel production of what was set to be his final film. The famous director had noted through the years that he intended to retire after 10 movies, leading many fans to believe the reason for the change of heart was caused by the immense pressure he was under trying to round out his career. Very little was known about the movie except for casting rumors of the director's longtime collaborator, Brad Pitt. Payson High School in Utah is cutting loose this weekend with special visit from movie star Kevin Bacon. The high school served as the filming location for the iconic 1984 film Footloose, which just celebrated its 40th anniversary. Students at the school launched their hashtag Bacon to Payson campaign several months ago. Students helping out with the campaign pledged to create and donate up to 40,000 essential resource kits to Bacon6Degrees.org Foundation. Bacon spoke at the school yesterday appreciating all of their students' hard work. Two very different space-related movies are headed to theaters, each for a limited time. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. In theaters, everyone can hear you scream. Alien is returning to the big screen for its 45th anniversary for a limited time beginning April 26th. Tickets are on sale now. A telescope is a time machine. And JWST can see deeper into the past than any telescope in history. To not long after the Big Bang. The James Webb Space Telescope is NASA's biggest science mission ever. The IMAX original documentary Deep Sky reveals some of the unprecedented images of the universe the telescope has revealed and what they tell us about the beginnings of time and space. Deep Sky is in IMAX theaters for one week beginning Friday. Kate Hudson is ready for her close-up as a singer and songwriter. Glorious is the debut album from the Oscar-nominated actress. The 12-song collection arrives in stores May 17th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Hudson revealed the title, cover, and release date of this album on Wednesday, as well as the first single titled, Gonna Find Out. Hudson stated that the process of writing the album has helped her find the core of who she is, and the album is showing the real her. In local news, as part of his final concert as a SUNY Oswego faculty member, music department professor Juan Lamana will host a concert featuring SUNY Oswego alumni. The concert will open with the College Community Orchestra, who will be joined halfway through by approximately 75 alum. Lamana says that he is thankful for the opportunities the SUNY system has provided him. You can attend the show at 4 p.m. on Saturday, April 27th in the Sheldon Hall Ballroom. 
The Oswego Players are preparing to perform Era Levin's The Death Trap. The play is a hit dark comedy, and it holds the record for the longest-running comedy thriller on Broadway. Performances will be held at the Francis Marion Brown Theatre at Ford, Ontario. The Death Trap will run from May 10th to the 19th. Sticking with the Oswego Players, they are on the lookout for playwrights looking to share their short plays. The Donald J. McCann Memorial One Act Playwriting Contest is dedicated to spotlighting local talent and is now accepting submissions. Winners will receive cash prizes and may have their productions staged and performed. For rules and ways to submit, visit the Oswego Players website. Now let's take a look at the weather. It's with Storm Team 10 meteorologist David Rienzo. Thanks guys. You know, recently we've had some pretty chilly temperatures, you know, especially for this time of year in spring. But we are, in f we are being lucky because the sun is going to pop out this week and temperatures are going to start to rise for a little bit because this is April, so you should be expecting some rain. We've got some rain headed our way on Wednesday as well as over on the weekend. But be sure to stick around because I'll tell you the best times to do some yard work around your house this week and I'll also be going over a common weather uh, adage that you may have heard before, so be sure to stick around after the break. But first, back to the desk. Thanks, David. Coming up later tonight, find out the winner of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. And news on Harry Styles' recent stalker, all after our weather report. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm meteorologist David Rienzo. Now, if you, saw, if you caught the sunset by the lake, you may have noticed that it was very beautiful and very red. This is a good sign for us. Um, you may have heard the saying, red skies at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. So it's saying that in the night, you're going to be in for some pleasant weather. Let's, let's see what the science is. So if the sun is rising out of the east and you have storms coming in from the west, the rays from the sun are going to hit the clouds and then come back to you in the form of red. So this means that a storm is approaching you in the morning if you're seeing red skies. However, on the flip side at night during sunset, the sun is going to be setting out of the west. But if you have a storm moving out from the east, the rays are going to hit that cloud and then be reflected back to you in the shade of red. So that means that storms will be getting out of the area. You won't, you're going to be in for some nice weather. So, Red skies at night, sailors delight, and there's pretty calm weather. 
but right skies in the morning, sailors take warning because you're in for some nasty weather. So to fact check this, this is mostly true. Um, there are, of course, some exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, this is true. Now in Oswego, we are also looking at some calm weather because of this. It's a little chilly at 42 degrees, and winds are pretty strong out of the west at 12 miles per hour. But skies are very clear, and this is true for most of the state. You know, we've got some lingering clouds over the, the Great Lakes areas, and over the main portion of the state, it's pretty clear skies. Um, down in the south and around Kingston, you've got some pretty mostly cloudy skies. But for the most part across the state, we're seeing some very clear weather, and this is going to lead into tomorrow. Where we're going to see some very sunny skies. However, it's still going to stay pretty cool, 46 degrees as a high tomorrow, not bad. Maybe some uh, hoodie and jeans weather. Winds are pretty calm, and this continues into tomorrow night. Partly cloudy skies, still pretty chilly, 37 degrees. Once again, not bad. But winds are going to start to pick up tomorrow. Tomorrow, or Tuesday, we've got some even stronger winds at around 15 to 20 miles per hour. Some breezy, um, high temperatures around 63 degrees. So some very warm temperatures Tuesday. We are in luck, but the clouds aren't going to build as we have showers moving in on Tuesday night. So if you're planning to do some yard work this, e this week, Tuesday would be your best bet. Uh, I'd say go for it around the afternoon, between evening, mostly around 6 o'clock maybe, you know, you're getting off of work. That would be your best bet. Monday, Monday's not bad. It's just going to be a little chilly. Tuesday, though, you mostly got to look out for the winds. And you, you want to make sure that you're done by around the late evening because we do have some showers moving in Wednesday night. That is going to continue mostly through the morning, morning time. However, they should be done around the afternoon, 2 o'clock most likely. We, are do, we will be some seeing some chilly skies, 45 degrees as a high and 34 as a low. Now winds are going to be even stronger. This week, high temperature, 63 on Tuesday, like I said. Um, very sunny skies for the rest of the week, but watch out for some rain on Saturday and Sunday. That's my full forecast. Now back to the desk. Thanks, David. In international news, the title of America's Next Drag Superstar goes to Nympho Wind, the season 16 winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. Wind has become the first Taiwanese drag queen to win the competition, who wowed the judges with her consistent original designs inspired by her heritage. Recently, in an interview with Good Morning America, Wynn described her love for drag and the importance for her to represent Taiwan on the show. Imran Khan, a former actor of India descent, stated in an interview with Film Companion his concerns when it comes to the glorification, fetishization, and sexualization of violence in modern films. He particularly referenced Ranbir Kapoor 2023 film Animal, a movie following the main character's setting on a path of vengeance and destruction. Imran expressed discomfort in the trend, and his interview garnered a lot of attention online and took it as a targeted critique of the film Animal. Netflix has shared the first teaser of the upcoming TV series adaptation of 100 Years of Solitude. This series is based off of a novel of the same title written by Colombian novelist Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which he published in 1967. The novel stands as Garcia Marquez's magnum opus, and the book is considered a landmark in Hispanic culture. The upcoming show will be directed by Laura Mora and Alex Garcia Lopez. Mira Carvalho, a 35-year-old Brazilian woman, has been sentenced to jail for 14 weeks in the UK for stalking the popular English star Harry Styles. Carvalho, in less than one month, sent Styles over 8,000 cards, with some including handwritten and wedding cards. Documents showed she had been staying at a backpacker's hostel in West London since December. Styles has issued a restraining order, and the, women, the woman is banned from West East London and attending his shows. Coming up in our Tea Report, Jose Vasquez. Jose, what's the tea? Coming up on the Tea Report, we have details of rapper Glorilla's arrest in Georgia and some of Coachella's highlights. All this and more after the break. I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. <laughs> yeah,
Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. With sports and news and what to do, we're here for you. It's your TV, your TV, you're watching WTLP. Your TV, your TV, thanks for watching WTLP. Welcome back to Entertainment News. I'm Jose Vasquez and I got the team for you. The infamous music festival Coachella took place earlier this month. Some of the highlights of it were I Spice previews and performs new song Give Me a Light as her new upcoming album Y2K. Grimes, the singer slash DJ, apologizes for her set saying she was having major technical difficulties as the artist was heard screaming in the mic in frustration. Blur lead singer gets gets and tells a visibly dry and quiet crowd that they won't see them again and that they might as well blank sing. Shakira, during her surprise appearance, announces that she's having her world tour. Do you guys wish you guys were at Coachella this year? I don't know about you, Hannah, but I don't. I, <laughs> I love watching it from afar. I like seeing the Instagram photos. Yeah, the artists were definitely like one that I would want to see, but I feel like it was nice to see it just like on social media. That yeah. was good enough for me. I 100% agree. I feel like those conditions are 100% not for me, like 100 degree weather, you can't shower, yeah. too expensive. Yeah. If you guys were to go, who would you guys really, like the one artist you guys would want to see? I, I would be excited to see Renee rap. Mm, that, after yeah, the that's, Mean Girls that's movie. A good yeah, for me, it would be Lana Del Rey, cause especially she, her yeah. performance looked really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I love her. For me, it'd probably be Tyler. I love him so much. Okay. Tyler, Lil okay. Uzi. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Taylor Swift, Grammy Award winner, drops her 11th studio album, The Torture Poets Department, and breaks Spotify history and becomes the first album to surpass 200 million streams in one day. Taylor Swift also throws shade at Kim K. Kardashian in her track, Thank You, Amy. Taylor Swift sings about Kim Kardashian's daughter, Northwest, singing the same songs written about her mom. I know you guys love Taylor Swift, so what do you guys think about the album? I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Yeah, it's been, I feel like it's different for her, but also like just what you, we need from Taylor Swift, so. Are you guys happy that it's a like really, really long album? I heard she dropped, how many songs was it? 31. 31, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah I mean. Just a lot to learn, you know. Yeah, lots of, <laughs> I saw a lot of stories. A, a lot of karaoke, yeah. a lot for the karaoke. Um, what do you guys think Taylor's shading Kim now? I mean, I think a song takes a lot of time to produce. I don't mm. think that this was something that happened yesterday. So right. Who yeah. knows when she wrote it? And she still probably had this like resentment towards her and some anger that she wants to write through her songwriting and let it all go, I guess. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just weird that she brought up her daughter. All right, should we move on to another singer? <laughs> yeah. Rapper Glorilla arrested in Georgia after allegedly doing a U-turn on a red light and charged with driving under the influence possessing an open container in a motor vehicle and failure to obey a traffic control device. According to the police officer on scene, rapper wasn't making sense and was having a hard time finishing her thoughts. Glorilla claims that she had drank earlier in the evening, but that she was, quote, good to drive. What do we think about Glorilla, guys? Honestly, I don't know Gorilla. I've I haven't I haven't been following her music. Really, she she's pretty upcoming. She had a couple hits. She recently announced that she's going on tour with uh, Megan Thee Stallion uh, on the Hot Girl Summer tour. So she's been making up. Uh, she's been coming up. What do you guys? How do you guys feel that's gonna do for her and her career? That she's she got a DUI. Guys. I mean, I don't really think it's going to help, but it might not really affect her that much. I feel like in Hollywood, that's not an uncommon thing to be arrested. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Right, right, yeah. 
I hope I hope the best for her because she has a lot of talent. <laughs> Well, coming up in sports, we have Mike Neckers. Hey, Mike, can you give us a quick preview? Hey, guys, when we return, there is scandal in the English Premier League, and things aren't looking too hot for the Miami Heat. We'll have all this and more after the break. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. And welcome back. My name is Mike Neckers, and I'm here with our first ever Sunday Night Sports Report. We'll kick things off with the Oswego State baseball team as they pulled off an impressive 7-6 win against SUNY Cortland. In a back-and-forth game, it all came down to the bottom of the ninth. The bases loaded for Trey McGowan with the game tied at six runs apiece and just one out for the Lakers. McGowan would fly out to left field, but it gave Daniel Winchester just enough time to tag up at third and beat the throw home handing the Cortland Red Dragons their first SUNYAC conference loss of the season. We'll take a quick trip over to the UK now, where English Premier League side Nottingham Forest fell short to Everton FC today by a score of 2-0. The real story, however, is the, is the calls made by the referees in today's game. Three, quote, missed penalty calls from video assistant referee Stuart Atwell were enough for Nottingham Forest to take to social media platform X expressing their displeasure. The English Football Association is aware of the situation and will likely begin investigations into both the Referees Union as well as Nottingham Forest before the Premier League season is over. We'll move back to the United States now, but stick with soccer, as Inter Miami has put together what many people are calling a dream squad this season. The squad features the arguable GOAT of soccer, Lionel Messi, as well as Champions League winners such as Luis Suarez, Jordi Alba, and Sergio Busquets. Despite the talent that Inter Miami has in the squad, they are just two points ahead of Eastern Conference rivals, the New York Red Bulls, who have a game in hand on them. We'll stay down on the warm beaches of Miami now and head over to the NBA, where the Miami Heat are in a not-so-good situation, as decorated veteran and star player Jimmy Butler is expected to miss multiple weeks of playoff basketball. Butler, who was averaging 20.8 points per game during the regular season, suffered an undisclosed right MCL injury during the Heat's playoff play-in game versus the Philadelphia 76ers. The Heat have already lost their first game of their playoff series to the Boston Celtics and will look to bounce back Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We've got a lot more basketball going on this week, but for now we'll head up east to the East Coast to Madison Square Garden where Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks took on Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers in game one of the first round of the NBA playoffs just last night. And the Sixers started out pretty hot with Kyle Lowry finding Embiid who drives, fights, and gets the bucket with a little and one. And you know what? This layup was so nice we had to see it twice. A little spin and some pizzazz from Embiid makes it a three-point play. 
That wasn't the last we would see of him though, as he drives and finishes again right here. DiVincenzo tried to swat that one away, but Embiid was just too strong through the contact and in for two. Knicks did figure things out eventually, as that's Bohan Bogdanovich who drills an open three right over Batum. And Jalen Brunson wanted some action too, a little step back, spin move, fade away, and a bucket for him. He would finish tonight with 22 points. If you thought it'd be smooth sailing for the Knicks, think again, because here's Embiid up and a posterizer, a massive dunk there from Embiid. He would go down with an injury though, and would have to exit the game, helped to the sideline by the staff. The Knicks used his absence as their, to their advantage as McBride drilled an uncontested three here. A nice one, he would finish tonight with 21 points. And they thought they were done with Embiid, but he comes back right out of halftime, feeling better. You can't get rid of him that easy, come on. The Sixers were able to get back within two of the Knicks, but McBride strikes again, tray ball from the top of the key. And Anuobi won again, the action said, hey, it's my turn, another one there. And one more three-pointer would do it for the Knicks, as it's Josh Hart with the dagger here to secure the W, finishing his night with 22 points and 13 rebounds. That's a double-double. And the Knicks now lead the series one to nothing, and will play Philly Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Again, I'm Mike Neckers, and we'll be right back to close out your entertainment news after the break. What's going on? Yeah, it's, dude, we're, this, we're going at like 11.30. It's like, no. what, what do you mean no? It's 10.30. 10.30? Nah, it's 10.30. What do you mean it's 10.30? Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey, man. Whoa. Did you know this book was already discounted 10%? Wow. Wow. Let's get a closer for that one. Matthew, look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. We'll deep dive into our feelings and our real talk segment. Stay tuned because it's about to get real. sensation Ariana Grande. Grande is an American singer, songwriter, and actress noted for her four octave range and use of the whistle register. She began her career as 15 as a Broadway performer in the musical 13 and rose to prominence in Nickelodeon's Victorious as Cat Valentine. She has taken home numerous awards throughout her career including a Brit Award, two Grammy Awards, two Billboard Music Awards, three American Music Awards, and 35 Guinness World Records. Rolling Stones even ranked her among the greatest vocalists of all time. Wow, isn't she just, isn't she just spectacular? Absolutely. Really, really impressive career. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And David, can you give us a quick preview about what we're looking like with the weather in the next yeah, couple of days? Yeah, absolutely. You know, spring's finally starting to come around. We've got some nice temperatures, especially on Tuesday with a high of 62. But just do expect to see some rain on Wednesday and also a chance on Sunday night into Saturday. Well, great. So how should we be dressing? Any raincoats or... Um, raincoat on set on Wednesday, but you can probably bust out the shorts and short sleeves on Tuesday. Well, perfect. Oh Thank you so much, David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's our report for tonight. Make sure to stay tuned for WTOP 10's draft special at 1030. Thank you for watching. Have a great night, everyone.